Hello friends, today I'll be showing you how to replace the battery on this UFI RoboVac G30. If your UFI robot vacuum is having battery life issues and is not going to your old home, consider using the auto return setting where the robot vacuum will return to the base station and automatically charge up to 80% and then resume cleaning. After removing these two identical Phillips head screws, the battery cover just pulls open. As you can see here, there's just tabs on the back side that was holding it in place. And you can see the two holes where the screws go through right there and there. The battery is wrapped in white tape and provides these two tabs to help you pull it out. Cable going to the battery has two conductors and this white connector has a tab that needs to be lifted up slightly before it can be detached. Zooming in here you can see that's the tab that I had to lift up on with my finger. And you can see on the battery itself, there's like a plastic bump that that tab was holding onto. Here's the battery specs. It's four cells in series, 18650. The battery's nominal voltage is 14.4, which makes sense for four 18650 cells in series. The battery capacity is 37 watt hours which is about one third of the 99 watt hour maximum you can take on an airplane, which also makes about one third of what a MacBook Pro battery capacity is. So this white tape that was wrapped around the battery is just to provide us with that pull tab to help remove the battery, just to discourage us from using something metal and sharp like a knife to help us with removing the battery. Off camera, I used some scissors to cut a small slit in the heat shrink tubing. Now we're going to remove the heat shrink tubing from the battery so we can get a better look at it. Glued to either end of the battery are pieces of fish paper used to insulate the battery. So you can see underneath this fish paper there's these two nickel strips and they're both spot welded to the battery cells. You can also see that every other cell is in the opposite orientation because this battery is four cells in series. You can also see that these cells are glued together. What's also interesting is you can see right here there's an, a wire covered in insulation that goes to the nickel strip. There's another one on the other side that goes to the nickel strip. This is because there'll be like a circuit board and computer on the other side of the battery and it will use these two wires to balance the battery so it'll be able to measure the voltage of individual cells by measuring across one battery to that wire. Here you can see the BMS, or Battery Management System Circuit Board. So this does the balancing of the battery and it likely contains some sort of temperature management circuit that will like shut the battery down if it gets too hot or too cold. I 
I did not actually buy a new batteries. I think they're a waste of money. So I'm going to push these fish paper ends back onto the battery. And I'm going to wrap the whole thing in packing tape just to be safe. Even though this battery does not go into a place that has exposed metal or anything like that. So I don't think it'll be an issue either way. Now we're going to plug the battery back in. Remember to get the connector orientation correct. Side with the tab, close on top. We're going to push the battery in and drop the cover in. We're going to put our two screws in. Thank you for watching. Please leave any questions, comments, or concerns down below.